Hey everyone, I'm Hujiwana and welcome back to Space Dock, where we once again return to Space Fighters, the topic of a number of previous videos. Of particular interest to me is the idea that Babylon 5's Star Fury is the best fighter design, due to the efforts made towards making it realistic. It has an engine layout fully designed around Newtonian physics, allowing it to rotate on the spot without changing the direction it moves in, with a centrally located cockpit for limiting g-forces on the pilot. In practice, the Star Fury is very similar in the way it performs in space combat to the Colonial Vipers from the reimagined Battlestar Galactica, which I'm sure most of you are more familiar with. The Star Star Fury is a really cool design, and has the best version of those forked thrust deflector thingies, but I disagree that it's the tippest toppest space fighter design. In my opinion, it's actually inferior to one of the things that inspired it, the Gunstar from The Last Starfighter, created by the legendary Ron Cobb. Now if you haven't seen The Last Starfighter, you really should, as it's an excellent little 80s adventure, with some likeable characters and really cool set pieces. Though there is a bit of weirdness with the Star League, the Star Trek Federation-like equivalent in the setting, as they chant victory or death, which comes across as far more villainous than what was probably intended. It was also one of the very first films to use CGI, and it was surprisingly detailed for the time, especially compared to Tron which only came out two years prior. The Gunstar is the main ship in use with the Star League in their fight against the Kodan Empire, and has a number of obvious similarities to the Star Fury, mainly the engines, which all have manoeuvring thrusters pointing in all directions. The two craft actually have more differences than similarities though, most obviously that the Gunstar is much larger than a Star Fury, which I kinda like as I think many fighter craft in sci-fi are absolutely tiny to an almost absurd degree. The biggest offender with this is BSG's Viper, though the Mark III from Blood and Chrome chonks it up a bit. Star Wars also has its fair share of minuscule spacecraft, but they don't even pretend to be realistic, so meh. These small fighters do make those things more practical for use on TV and movie sets, as they are meant to be small enough props to easily film around. It is a bit silly though when it feels like a Viper cockpit and canopy could fit inside the canopy of a modern fighter jet. I get that jets are huge because of aerodynamic surfaces, but a lot of their size comes from their engines and weapons loadout. Ammunition in BSG gets stored in micro TARDISes hidden inside Vipers anyway, and missiles in sci-fi dogfighting are overlooked for narrative reasons. Back to the Gunstar and Star Fury though, and the main and most important difference is the doubling of the crew. One of them is the pilot, the other is the gunner. This splits the task load each person has to deal with, allowing them to focus purely on that one aspect of their job. At first glance, this may seem like a stupid idea, as when would the gunner know when to fire his weapons? In a Star Fury, or really any other single seat fighter, the name of the game is about lining up the nose of your craft with the flight path of your enemy, and simultaneously avoiding flying across your opponent's nose. When lined up, you can put down fire and take them out. This is complicated a little when weapons are mounted very far away from the centre line of the craft, but gun convergence can help with that. This is where the aim point of the various weapons isn't actually dead straight, but instead turns slightly inward so their fire all crosses over at a certain distance in front of the fighter. This appeared on World War II aircraft, particularly those with single propellers and multiple weapons mounted in their wings, but dropped off again with the continued development of jet aircraft and introduction of high rate of fire rotary cannons. As Star Wars space combat is based on World War II combat, it's easy to understand why the wide set weapons on X-Wings and the like isn't all that big of a deal. And they look cool, so it doesn't matter that much. Convergence does have its upsides and downsides, such as adding yet another complication of ideal distance to combat, but the greater concentration of fire was very much worth it. When the pilot and gunner is the same person, timing bursts of fire is obviously going to be a lot easier. So why does the Gunstar separate them? Well, it doesn't have a traditional forward fixed armament for a space fighter, instead opting for a number of laser turrets that can cover all angles, backed up by missiles and a particle beam weapon we unfortunately never got to see. The gunner's seat can also rotate to face in any direction, and has a heads up display that highlights targets even through the body of the Gunstar. You'd think that was super futuristic, but the F-35 can do pretty much the same thing but better with its crazy helmet display. The thing is, aiming at targets that are moving one way while riding along and something that can unpredictably change direction as someone else is controlling it has got to be a real challenge. Anyone who has ever played any ridiculous on-rail shooter section in a video game would understand and has been frustrated by this very problem, but The Last Starfighter literally made that a plot point. An arcade cabinet version of the Gunstar was one of the ways Starfighters, the name for the gunner in the ship, were selected and trained. 
Alex, the protagonist of the film, developed the skill set needed before he ever even saw a Gunstar. And sure, he got a bit frustrated with the real thing during a training exercise, but he was still great at it when he settled in. So the Gunstar's gunner concentrates solely on shooting at targets, with the pilot obviously flying it and dealing with secondary systems like life support and power management. It doesn't matter that the two roles don't line up, as the gunner can engage any targets in any direction. This is what I think makes it superior to the Star Fury, as while that can indeed flip around to shoot something behind it or to the side, the Gunstar can shoot backwards by default. It's designed from the outset for engagement where the direction it's flying in isn't related to the direction it might need to fire in, which is perfect for vaguely realistic Newtonian flight. It's a shame really that it's never really shown flying sideways or backwards or anything, but it's entirely capable of doing it. While the Star Fury's engines are neat looking, as I said before it's got the best looking version of the fork engine thingies that smaller Earth Force vessels have, the Gunstar's engines are just cooler. The subtle outward angling, the tasteful thickness of the plumes, it even lands on its tail. That's another thing the Gunstar has over the Star Fury, as it can actually fly in atmosphere and even land. Sure there's the Thunderbolt, but that actually seems like its atmospheric flight came at the cost of its vacuum capabilities. And to be fair to both types of Star Fury, the Gunstar was never shown actually doing anything complicated in atmosphere other than landing and taking off. I'm not entirely sure how Star Furies are supposed to be recovered, perhaps with a docking arm or something, but they still need specialist infrastructure to support them. The downside of the Gunstar is its sheer size and bulk compared to a Star Fury, as mentioned earlier. This makes them a lot easier to hit, though in the movie the one Alex flies around is a special prototype called Gunstar 1, which has magic armor placing that seems to make it pretty much immune to damage. It also doesn't seem to have any escape method for the crew, unlike on the Star Fury, but they do at least have spacesuits on so I guess they could eject. While talking about it being a prototype, I can't not bring up the main thing that made Gunstar 1 stand out from its contemporaries, Death Blossom. It has a cool deployment sequence, it's got a special button, it spins, and we all know if it spins in sci-fi it's superior, and it just plain looks awesome. It has even directly inspired things in other franchises. Death Blossom alone makes it just better than the Star Fury, which has what? Tiny grabby hands? Okay, so it's unfair to compare a crazy prototype to the regular production Star Fury, but even without Death Blossom, the Gunstar is better. But what do you think? Is the smaller, leaner Star Fury better? Or is the more heavily armed Gunstar better? Am I crazy and the various BSG Vipers are better than both? Are realistic physics for fighters stupid and Star Wars does it better? Tell me how right or horribly wrong I am in the comments. Or does none of it matter because it's really all about the storytelling and audience investment that any starfighter is capable of? Yeah.